Okay, I finally got around to watching Turning Red. And I know there was a buttload of preemptive backlash on this movie. Honestly, the last time I remember this much backlash on a movie before it even comes out was probably Cuties. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really aware exactly what the issues technically were and why people were necessarily upset. I just knew that people were upset. The only thing I knew was that the trailer was cringe, but I mean, hey, it's about a 13-year-old girl in school. Obviously, it's gonna be cringe. And honestly, I never really had a big desire to watch this movie. It just didn't really seem like it was up my alley. I saw the trailer, shrugged my shoulders, and kind of just moved on. But after it was released, oh boy, it seemed like all hell broke loose. And just hearing even more and more people get upset, I was just like, okay, I gotta see what the hell this is about. I really went into this movie not really knowing why everyone one was so upset and why there was so much controversy. I just knew that there was a lot of controversy. And after I finished the movie, I was honestly confused. Why is everyone upset? Because period? That's pretty much all I got. Periods. That, that's why everyone's upset. Obviously curious, I went to the internet, more specifically my community tab, told everyone that I'm going to be reviewing Turning Red, and as it turns out, people kind of just already expressed their concerns with this movie. I'm just gonna read a few comments off my community post to just give everyone an idea why people are upset. There's another thing really weird in this movie I just can't get over, the part where she's charging money for people to record her panda is frankly disgusting. Say what you want about her Panda is an allegory for a period and sexuality. The creator has admitted it's a movie about a period. With this info in mind, making it seem like selling your sexuality is okay as a prepubescent minor shouldn't be in a kid's movie. This is more adult themed than movies even aimed at young adults. Another comment about the same problem. This was a pedo movie, LMAO. She goes around taking pics of her panda so she can make enough money to go see the new Travis Scott concert. This movie is literally just woke, modern Little Mermaid and a horrible influence on children. Okay, this is one of the big ones I see people complain about a lot. Her selling pictures of her panda. And yes, I am aware the panda is supposed to be somewhat of a metaphor for puberty and having her period. And there's a scene in the movie where they kind of use the panda as a way to gain money to go to a concert. You know, they sell merch of the panda, uh, they take pictures with the panda, etc. And for some weird ass reason, everyone is comparing this to selling nudes. Let me explain something to you guys. If there is nothing innately sexual about something, is there's, there's nothing that really shows any sexual nature whatsoever, I think you're the one who's sexualizing the situation and not the movie. Because on the surface, which is what it's supposed to be looked at as, May is a literal panda. If you're a 13 year old girl or boy or whatever, and you see a giant red panda in your school, you're going to love it. It is a fluffy, cute panda. You are going to love it. For some weird, creepy ass reason, you guys somehow take that and think sex. Stop it. It's a 13 year old girl. It's really strange that you're taking a very innocent situation and making it about selling nudes. It really just feels like you guys are the problem when you're sexualizing a very innocent situation. Okay, so let's move on to the next portion of why this movie is uh, controversial. People being so up in arms about the brief mention of periods in this movie is pretty funny considering the majority of them don't even have to worry about ever getting them. This I feel like was actually the biggest complaint out of everything was periods. Even my own family mentioned that they didn't like the whole period talk. But let's just take a second here and uh, realize that uh, periods are normal, okay? Puberty is normal. I don't know, maybe it's just because I grew up with sisters so it like doesn't bother me at all, but why is puberty and periods like a taboo topic? It really is confusing to me why it is taboo. I completely get why you don't want your child to know about sex or sexual things. But puberty has absolutely zero to do with sex. It's equivalent of a guy's voice dropping. Each person's going to have differing opinions on this topic depending on uh, how you were raised, really. But if we really think about this logically, wouldn't it make more sense to expose your daughter to uh, what a period is before it happens instead of just letting it happen and then have them freak out and be completely confused about what's going on. I feel like it's a lot more important to prepare your child for puberty instead of just like, let it happen to them and then figure it out as they go. It's a lot scarier to not know what's going on than to kind of be aware of what's going on. Obviously, I'm not saying, hey, uh, explain to your two-year-old daughter what a period is. Knowing about it or knowing that it exists before they reach the age that it happens is okay. 
it's not a huge deal. There's also other stuff that people were upset with, like May starting to like boys and being obsessed over boy bands and like, and her like drawing pictures of boys and stuff like that. But again, that is 13. That that legitimately is what it is. Honestly, I appreciate the realism that this movie really did. They didn't really pull any punches to what, you know, 13 year olds actually go through and what they deal with. Let's look at a few other comments just to see what people are saying. Um, let me guess, you loved it. Of course, even you would like this abominable crap. Okay, uh, calm down. <laughs> Relax, it's a kid's movie, man. And then we got one more, let's see. Um, I found it interesting, the title of this movie, Turning Red, came out the same time Russia-Ukraine war was going since Red was considered being a communist. What the fuck? Okay, uh, moving on. Now I'll just tell you guys the only uh, me being a parent complaint that I have throughout this entire movie is 13 year old girls going to a concert by themselves. If my son was 13, wanted to go to concert, I would just go with him to the concert. It's not that I don't think 13 year olds can go to a concert. I just don't think 13 year olds should go to a concert by themselves. I know concerts. I've been to concerts. I've seen what happens. Me personally, I would not like my child to go by themselves when they're that young. But that's really my only me being a parent complaint I have in this movie. Now, before we get into this wonderful masterpiece, let's talk about the sponsor of the day. That's right, it's Raycon. Now, I've been with Raycon for over a year and I have had the same earbuds and they have never let me down throughout this entire time. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds, they are just comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. I feel like the biggest issue with earbuds is that worry that they're gonna fall out when you're running, when you're shaking your head around, when you're doing backflips off the couch, you know? I don't know what you guys are doing. They offer eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life. And Raycons are priced just right. You get that quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder that these everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. Now, I always use these when I'm working out or maybe Maybe when I'm doing chores around the house, something like that, I just pop on an audio book that I've been listening to. Maybe I just listen to some music and I just go about my day. So what are you doing with your life? Go click the link in the description or just go to buyraycon.com slash bionicpig to get 15% off your Raycon purchase today. Let's talk about the things that I would complain about in this movie. I feel like the characters were a little bit boring. Obviously a lot of the dialogue was really cringe, but I mean, that's just because I'm an adult and this is a 13 year old movie. And a lot of people tend to complain about the animation in this movie, which I get it. It has that Pixar DreamWorks style where it's just, uh, they're all formulaic and kind of look the same. This one had a slightly different style to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but it had the same vibe as what most DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney animated movies look like, but it's just a little, little different spice to it. But let me just say something. When daddy cook, when daddy cook, okay, that's nice. Damn. Okay, that's all I gotta say. And personally, I feel like the main storyline was very boring. And by storyline, I mean, May wants to go to concert. Mommy says no. May goes anyway, make mom big mad, so they have a confrontation. That thing, that is kind of boring. But obviously the little nuances and like the deeper meanings behind everything made me like it. But yeah, like the main line of story I didn't like. And the confrontation was a little bit on the nose with the mom being a gigantic panda and then her being a small panda really giving that sense of scale, how it feels to go up against a parent. It really does feel like you're going up against a monster but it really, they really nailed it on the nose. But again, it, it's a kid's movie. They got it kind of laid on thick. But let's get into the movie. The movie follows Mei, who is a Chinese Canadian girl who just turned 13 and talks about how she's all grown up. And I do like that this follows a Chinese Canadian, you know, I mean, first of all, it's not set in America. Second of all, the, the Chinese culture is very interesting to listen to. But Mei just turned 13. She feels like she's all grown up now, making her own moves 24 seven, 365. She has three great friends who are all obsessed with the boy band known as Four Town, who's literally just in sync. And I do love how this movie is set up in the early 2000s, mostly because, you know, that's when I grew up. God, I'm getting old. But seeing Tamagotchis and flip phones and all that stuff, it, it really is nostalgia bait. I will admit they probably made this because they knew it was nostalgia bait and it worked. But something May is coping pretty hard about is her own mother. She kind of doesn't realize how strict her mother actually is. 
because because throughout her childhood, all May wants is to seek her mother's approval and she loves her mother and she wants to respect her mother. That's just how she was raised. But she doesn't really realize how constricted her mother really is when it comes to her. You know, forcing her to be home really early, doesn't really let her hang out with friends, makes her manage the temple, different stuff like that. Just something very interesting is that the writers of this movie, it was actually inspired by similar events that they dealt with in their own life. So a lot of the religious practices that is happening in this movie are pretty accurate, which I really like. It's really interesting. But here is where we find out how utterly insane May's mom actually is. And I would like to mention, I do not believe that I would consider Ming a poor mother by any means. She's honestly a great mother. She has a great connection with May, but the problem is that connection is bred in obedience and ruling your child, being a tyrant, which obviously leads to fissures and leads to rebellious action, which obviously teenagers are always gonna be rebellious, but if you're too constrictive, it becomes worse. Some people just believe that your child should just listen to everything you say without question at all. Personally, that's just not my philosophy as a parent. I feel like there really needs to be a good balance. There needs to be an open conversation. You can't just have a one-sided relationship. You need to be a parent first, but obviously you need to be a friend at the same time. You both need to have an equal understanding of each other because children are smart. People think that children are just dumb. They treat them like dogs sometimes, but no, children are very smart. But as I was saying, Ming being very overprotective, May was actually drawing pictures of boys. You know, she's getting to that age where she's starting to become very interested in boys and she doesn't understand why. So Ming found all of the drawings that she made of a specific boy that she was interested in. And instead of just lecturing May or telling her, hey, you know, these feelings for boys is very normal, you know, it happens and explaining her confusion away, she brings the pictures to the boy that she drew and basically blamed the boy for May drawing pictures of him. Because Ming also has this weird problem where she thinks May is absolutely perfect and if she does anything wrong, it's someone else's fault. And you'll see this throughout the movie. But this is literally one of the most embarrassing things and traumatizing, earth-shattering things I could think of as a child. And to show how utterly, I guess you could say brainwashed, that might be a little bit too high of a term for this. But instead of May getting upset with her mother for doing that, May gets upset with herself. Because again, she's confused why she did it in the first place. And instead of her mother trying to explain her emotions and why these things are happening, May just thinks, oh, that bad. I do not do that again. And now the infamous period scene that everyone seems so upset about. So May wakes up as a giant red panda and honestly, I love this part, how they link the red panda to uh, puberty and having a period, where Ming asks her if the red peony bloom, and May being a little bit confused if she meant panda or period, obviously says maybe, and so her mother freaks out believing it's a period. She grabs all these different supplies and like starts telling her, we'll get through this together and all that different stuff. It's kind of hilarious. But again, I don't get why this part is so frowned upon. If you are a child, you have no clue what's happening here. Nothing in this scene a child will look at and be like, what period? What? Wowie zowie. They're just gonna look past it, okay? Which is why I don't really get why people are so upset. The only people who will understand this part at all are people who already know what a period is. I don't know, maybe parents are just afraid that a child will ask what they meant. And if you don't want to tell your child about a period, just make up something. Oh no, the mom brought pads and mentioned pads. Oh no. Hell, honestly, El Dorado was way more adult than this damn movie. Because El Dorado literally had a sex scene in it, but no one really batted an eye. Talks Miguel into enjoying the city while she ends up seducing Tulio and they have some hot sex. Penis, vagina, action, baby, sex. So from here on out through the movie, May has red hair. She she goes to school the next day with a cap on to hide her head, and obviously she gets bullied because of what happened the day previously. And then she starts to realize that the panda comes out when she feels strong emotion. But again, Ming being freaking overprotective as hell, she was spying on May at school, and but this causes May to have a little bit of a panic attack, freak out, turn into a panda, and run home. And this is where Ming tells her that the red panda situation happened to her and her mother and etc. And then Ming tells a story about how her ancestors was blessed with the power to turn into a red panda to protect her children. And it has been passed down for generation and generation. However, they have the capabilities to seal the power of the panda if they so please, but they have to do it on a red moon. And that red moon happens to be a month away. And this is a problem because she wants to go to the four town concert, which is the 18th of that month. 
So she's going to have to deal with being a panda while she wants to go to that concert. But then she discovers that when she is surrounded by her friends, she's able to control her panda because her friends just kind of calm her nerves. After she shows her parents that she can control this panda, gets the courage to ask her mom to go to the concert and obviously she hits her with a fat no. And now we get to see why Ming is so uptight. She gets a call from her mother, May's grandmother, and she freaks out. This is another thing I like about this movie that happens toward the end. Parents tend to keep their past and things that they dealt with as a child away from their children. I guess they just feel like it, it protects them in some way. And I feel like that always leads to misunderstandings. I feel like if children understood why you acted a specific way and, and got why you did the things that you did because of your childhood, the child would understand you a lot more and vice versa, you would have a stronger connection. Again, children are smart. They're empathetic. They understand things that you don't really realize that they would understand. Obviously, I'm not saying drop your entire traumatic childhood story on your child today. I'm just saying if something happens and you're upset about a specific thing, it's okay to tell your child while you're upset because it gets them to understand why you were acting the way that you were acting instead of just thinking, oh, I must have done something wrong because my parents are upset at me. And then we get the next part that people complain about. A few kids find May in her panda form. And instead of like, you know, freaking out about it, they love it. It's a freaking red panda. It's cute as shit. Anyone who sees a red panda is gonna think it's cute. So everyone in the school starts hearing about this. So they start selling merch. They start selling pictures. They like take pictures with different kids and make videos and stuff like that in order to raise money to go to the concert. And no joke, the first time I watched this movie, I did not put that two and two together. It didn't even cross my mind. I just thought this was just a fun little part of the movie. Because again, let's be real. If there was a freaking panda at your school and you were 13, you would love it. May's grandmother and aunts all show up in order to help Ming with the ritual. But unfortunately, May promised a kid that she would be at a birthday party as Panda, basically in order to get a bunch of kids to go to his party. She was gonna get paid 200 bucks for this, which I mean, I, I don't understand what child has a spare $200 laying around. But before she was planning on leaving and sneaking out to go to the party, May's grandmother kind of scares her a little bit and says, the more you use the Panda, the stronger and more uncontrollable it becomes. And we also find out that if she doesn't seal the Panda by the red moon, she won't be able to seal it. Again, at this point, you can't really make a metaphor of uh, having a period with this, you know? Started off as a metaphor and it moved on to actual Chinese lore, okay? And also her grandmother told Mei that Ming and her used to be close until Ming's panda came out and, uh, and apparently that is why her grandmother has a scar on her face. Because just like Ming, Mei's grandmother wants them to have a connection because Ming and her mom's connection were kind of broken from the issues they had in the past. But at the last second, Mei decides, screw it, let's go to the party anyway. They'll have a nice fun time. You know, she makes $200. But unfortunately, Mei's friend misread the date and it's not on the 18th. It's actually on the same day as the ritual. That's the concert. So after Mei finds this out, she goes into a fit of rage and ends up attacking the birthday boy. And Ming ends up showing up. And instead of getting mad at Mei, just like I said in the beginning, she doesn't think Mei did anything wrong. She thinks it was her friend's idea to do it. And this is an important moment in the movie where Mei gets the choice to either tell her mom the truth and show her that she has been doing all of these things or lie and go to her mother and kind of turn her back on her friends, which... She does turn her back on her friends because she is too afraid to lose the approval of her mother. And here comes my favorite scene. The father throughout this movie has almost been a background character. But the reason he's been a background character is not necessarily because he's a bad father. He actually is a great father. But Ming kind of just calls all the shots and he's kind of just, you know, chills in the back. But Jin finds May's camcorder and sees all of the videos that she is doing with her friends as Panda. And he notices that his daughter is very happy doing this stuff. Which I just want to mention those people who are relating those videos to uh, her doing sexual things on camera. Um, you're fucking weird. You're weird. But her dad talks to Mei about when Ming got her panda. And actually the reason that Ming and her mom lost their connection is over Jin. Because Ming's mother didn't approve of Jin and Ming didn't care. And that's when they got into their big panda fight. And then he says a great line to Mei. I actually love this line. That instead of pushing the bad parts of you away or taking them away, it's a lot better to learn to live with them and accept them. Acceptance really is the key to happiness. And then Jin mentions that you do seem happy with the panda, so why get rid of it? So they do the ritual, but the last 
last second, May decides that she actually wants to keep the panda and runs off to the concert. Or in that moment where May runs off and accidentally pushes down her own mother, she falls to the ground and her mother's amulet that is protecting her red panda breaks. And damn, she big! So May goes to the concert and makes up with her friend and there's mommy! But now we get the final showdown, so to speak, and this is the part where I talked about where it's kind of on the nose, mom versus daughter, mom is gigantic monster, daughter is small monster, they have a little, you know, mother-daughter uh, scuffle. Somehow was able to knock down her mom in her giant panda form, but May was not able to pull her mom into the circle. So not only did grandma, but also all of the ants broke their amulets and turned into their red pandas in order to get the strength to bring the mom into the circle. And so the ritual did finally happen for all of them this time. And the ending scene is honestly my favorite part of the movie. It even made me tear up a little bit. May sees her mother as a child in the spirit world crying and scared just like May was. Young Ming was crying because she accidentally hurt her mother when she didn't mean to because, you know, her red panda came out, which she can't really control that well, and she accidentally hurt her mother. Showing the side of her mother that she never really knew. Seeing that the reason her mother is so protective of May is that Ming doesn't want what happened with her and her mother to happen with her and May because Ming accidentally ruined their relationship. Her protectiveness comes from a place of fear of losing May, which as a parent, again, I, I completely understand this. So in the end, Grandma, the aunts, and May's mother all leave the spirit world and leave their pandas behind. But before the grandmother leaves, she tells May that she can keep the panda if she so wants to. And this part at the end can relate back to the metaphor of puberty and just growing up in general. You can't even really relate this to puberty, but just growing up. May is afraid that this panda will cause a distance between her and her mother, but that could just be related to growing up in general because as you grow up as a child, once you hit like 13 and above and turn into a teenager, you really do start having a little bit of a separation with your parents. You know, that's not your baby anymore. They're actually growing up and they're able to do things without your help. So there really is a separation that starts to happen when they get that age. But Ming tells her it won't matter. They're going to stay together no matter what. And then at the end, you know, they live happily ever after. May seems like she can control her panda. And Ming seems like a lot more accepting of a mother. She even says that her friends could come over and eat, even though that Ming hated her friends before, which I just want to mention, I hate this trope. I'm just going to say it. I hate this trope so much. Let's be real. 90% of the time, Parents would not do this. If you get up in your parents' face and tell them the actual truth and like facts and logic, basically, just say, hey, I'm growing up. You should let me, you know, hang out with my friends and, and do stuff that I want to do and blah, 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 blah. If you did that, most of the time, your parents are going to say, no, you sit your ass down and they're just going to be a lot more strict. I kind of hate the trope in movies that they do this because let's be real, it just wouldn't happen like that in real life. I mean, some parents maybe, you know, some parents might have more of an understanding in that situation, but a lot of parents are kind of just like, you shut up, you're the child, you listen to me, I don't care what you say. But obviously, they're not going to actually show something like that on a kid's movie. Oh, I just wanted to mention that. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that's Turning Red. Honestly, I feel like it's a decent movie. I mean, I didn't love it because, you know, I'm I'm a grown man. So obviously this is, isn't gonna really, you know, connect with me too much. But I feel like as a parent and dealing with similar stuff like that as a child, there was a good amount of connection with this movie. But you know, like the 13 year old girl situation didn't really click with me. But when it comes to the coming of age and puberty and, and, and the struggles of growing up, I feel like this movie did it great. And you know, some people are gonna say that they made this movie specifically to cause a culture war because they know for a fact people would get upset about this just so it could get some more traction. I mean, who knows? Could be, couldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if they thought of something like that, but whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a good day. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, and tell your mom about me. Bye.